child, her man just came out. Listen, I'm going to tell you all about it, okay? Get in here, click like and click share, honey. You know I always got something to share with you, okay? So listen, listen, listen. Okay, so girlfriend wrote in to me, okay? And she said, she said, she said, um, MJ, 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 I have a question. How do I know if my man is, you know, gay or bi or something other than just straight? And so I said, well, tell me more, right? And so she kind of talked to me a little bit more and told me what the, what the situation was. She said that, you know, she always has wondered, you know, about him a little bit, just something her instincts told her. She just not, she wasn't sure, you know, and your instincts can speak loud. Okay. But sometimes you can't tell the difference between, is this your instincts or is this your paranoia? Is this your instincts or is this your trauma? Cause we all got stuff going on here. Okay. So she just wanted a little verification, um, just to be able to talk about it. Okay. And so she said, Hey, um, she said, I don't know if my man is gay. How do I know? I just got a feeling. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I said, well, let me ask you this. I said, sis, what is his, you know, sentiments towards gay people in general? You know, like y'all out and about in the mall, you know, a, a couple walk by holding hands, rather as women, rather as men's, you know, um, whatever it may be. See something happen on TV. What is his reaction? What is his sentiments? You see what I'm saying? Um, towards that. And she said, oh, no, baby. She's like, uh, she says, actually, that's what made me think he wasn't gay. Because every time a gay couple walk by or every time something comes up on TV, oh, my God, MJ, he always got something nasty to say about them. Like, oh, they this, oh, they that, blah, blah, blah. So that's why I thought he wasn't gay because, you know, he always got, you know, he, all, he doesn't really have positive opinions about gay people. And I just paused for a minute. I paused. Mm, Y'all click like and share. <laughs> you go want to hear the next part of this. Oh, I paused. And I said, I said, sis, your man is your sis. He just came out to you, girl. Let me explain why. Here's the bottom line, okay? I'm not saying this about all homophobic people, but I am saying this about most, okay? People bark loudest, okay? They bark loudest about things that trigger them personally, okay? I'm not saying that you got to like gay people. I'm not saying that you don't have to like this or do have to like that, okay? Although it is crazy to me that you would choose just not to like somebody about who they go to bed with. Meanwhile, we don't give a damn about the fact that you still fucking that married man, pardon my language, but that's just, that's just our conversation for another time. I said, but people tend to speak up loudest about things that personally trigger them. And there have been multiple studies that have been done that show that people with homophobic tendencies, meaning they always got something nasty to say or judgmental to say about gay people, about bisexual, about, about anybody other than who's other than straight, that they said there have been multiple studies that have been done that show that these people usually, or in a lot of cases, have same-sex desires that are often repressed, which means they are aware of their desires, they are uncomfortable with their desires, and because they are aware of their desires and uncomfortable with their desires, seeing that couple over there, seeing that person over there, seeing anybody out there walking out living their full life, you hear what I'm saying, baby? Living that, living their full life, okay? It makes that person uncomfortable. It triggers them. It makes them say, ooh, I can't stand them. It ain't got nothing to do with you, Curtis. It ain't got nothing to do with you, Sally, okay? Some of y'all's old aunts, no, no shade to, aunt, to Ophelia. I'm just using the name like this. Y'all old Aunt Ophelia, who always got something to say for all you know, she always got something to say about you or about your little cousin Demarcus because of the fact that Ophelia couldn't live out her full life with old Shelly back in the day. You know, Shelly wasn't just her, her, her nice lady friend, honey. She was her lady friend, and she couldn't live that out. You see what I'm saying? And so... To me, one of the things I think to myself is I say, you know, pain likes to create pain for other people when pain has not been processed in a, in a healthy way, okay? So if I'm living within pain within myself because I feel like I can't be my full self and I have not processed that in a healthy way, then I'm going to inflict pain on other people. That's why when I even see people on my page who write crazy stuff or whatever, you know, one of the things I always say is I say bless them. I, I say bless them, honey. In fact, if you ever see somebody write, somebody write something negative on my page in reference to all that, just put a little rainbow sign beside there up under their post and say say god bless you that's all you gotta say honey god put a little rainbow and say god bless you because that's all they doing is they saying that they triggered okay this is a message for y'all out there okay because some of y'all you know, we we having this, I think we're Memorial Day weekend right now, and shout out to our service members who have protected us um, in, within our country. I'll tell you, I appreciate you all so much. You know, um, but you know, when we in this weekend, we're calling this reunion weekend because a lot of people have been stuck in the house, you know, because of Ronan Tone and all this other stuff for the last year and a half. And so now people finally able to see their families. But for, for a lot of people, this is not a celebratory event. This is not a celebratory event. 
who is it? Sharian, Sharian, um, Lloyd says, yep, Flame Monroe. I love Flame Monroe. Said that, um, in Tasha K's interview. It's the truth. You know, for some people, this is not a celebratory event going to see their families because their families represent homophobia or certain, not all family members, but certain members of the family represent homophobia and all kinds of negative things, you know? And so with that said, they're not celebrating going to see their families. But I say, listen, wouldn't you have such a different mindset if you knew that that uncle who always got something to say about you, always got something to say about you because the fact is that he can't live out his full desires or the fact is he could be cheating on his wife living out his full desires, if you know what I mean. But seeing you is triggering to him. How I think of it is like this, okay? You know how you ain't, you know how it is when you get a new kind of car? Like, let's say you get a new red Honda Accord. I'm just making up a, a car, right? And then you ain't never noticed red cars or Accords beforehand. But once you get a red Honda Accord, it seems like everywhere you go, everybody got a red car or a red Honda Accord. You just see them everywhere once you finally get something. That's the whole thing. What we see within the world is often a reflection of what we see within ourselves. Let me say that again. What we see within the world is often a reflection of what we see within ourselves. So if somebody always got the need to say something about somebody's sexual orientation or about any part of somebody's life, then and what they're indicating to you is what they see within themselves. Click like and click share on that, baby, okay? I'm not here to shame nobody. What I am here to do is to simply acknowledge the fact that that, that relative who got something nasty to say about everybody, that person who always got to say something about somebody, they more than likely got something going on within their hair. Remember what I said? What you see within the world is often what you see within yourself. So here's what I want y'all to do, okay? Because I know I got so many wonderful ladies and, and gentlemen who watch me. And I know that the vast majority of you all are straight. You know, that's the, the vast majority of you all are straight. I recognize that, okay? And here's what I'm going to tell you to do, okay? When the next, when you out at the family barbecue today or you out with whoever and wherever and, and you hear you hear one of those relatives say something nasty or something terrible about, about, um, about, about the little cousin or about the auntie, about the uncle, about the whoever, and they saying whatever, and you see that little cousin shrinking down, getting quiet, and they feel so, un so uncomfortable, or you see that grown cousin getting uncomfortable because because of what Uncle Curtis or, or Ain't Ophelia or whoever got to say out the side of their damn neck. Okay, here's what I want you to do. Here's what I want you to do. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to speak the hell up at that point in time, okay? Speak the hell up and put them on blast and say, Curtis, why don't you shut your old ass up? Shut up, okay? Why are you always talking about DeMarcus? Why are you always talking about Tina? Huh? Huh? It seems like you always got something to say about them. What's going on in your head, huh? What's going on in your head? Why Why are you so worried about them, huh? Sound like you trying to hide something. You put them on blast, okay? Because here's the reality. Here's the reality, okay? I would not be the MJ Harris that I am today, able to inspire you, able to love you all virtually, able to help empower you to your next level within your life if I didn't have people like Deborah Mack and Destiny Kelly. Kelly and John Stevens and, and Kevin, Kevin, Kevin Wheeler um, out here protecting me. If I didn't have those kinds of people like that within my lives who were who when I was a little boy, would, would tell other relatives, shut up and don't say nothing about him. If Even as I was becoming a teenager and a grown man, having those people protecting me, they were my advocates. They were my allies. They stood in my corner to be able to protect me from those, from those insecure people who I later would find out in life. Most of the people who ever picked on me in my life as a child and everything like that, half of those dudes be, have been in my inbox as an adult. Yes, yes, indeed. Hey, how you doing? I, you don't remember me from, from middle school? Yeah, I remember your sorry ass. Uh-huh. Yeah, I remember you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just, I just, I want to let you know, you know, I always thought you was very handsome and very attractive. I'm sorry about how I treated you. You see where I'm going with that, baby? It's happened more than enough time, honey. I ain't got enough fingers and toes to tell you about how many times it happened. But the reality is, I had friends throughout my life. I had people like Shaquilla. I had people like um, my friends, what was her name? Waltrina. I remember my friends, her, her name, her dad's name was Walter, and they called her Waltrina. Mm -hmm. And so I had another friend out there. Who was my other friend? Samantha. I had so many beautiful friends out there who was standing in my corner who said, who said, you know what? Uh-uh, not today, not today, not today. Listen, we're going to protect him and, and we're going to tell y'all that's not appropriate for you to speak to him like that, okay? So to the sis who just wrote in about your man, baby, okay? I don't know your man from a can, from a can of paint, but what I can say is this, is that, is that it, it's a bit suspect to me. It's a bit suspect to me that your instincts are going off about this man. And on top of that, he clearly is displaying homophobic tendencies 
fantasies. Because when you mix that recipe together, the outcome is that you got a gay husband. I'm just saying that's not always the case, but I'm just saying this happened a lot of times. But I love y'all to death for all those people out there who protected me. Click like, click share, okay, and have a wonderful Memorial Day. And thank you to all of our service members out there who have given their lives for us, okay? Let me tell you, we can never repay you or your families for your sacrifice, but we can, at the very least, recognize and thank you today. Have a good one, folks. Bye-bye.